I'm Chris Englefield and I'm the technical manager at English Braids. This is our factory in Great Morven where we manufacture rope from base material to finished product. This is how it starts. That, that's what we would call 1100 flat yarn. So if you're if you, imperial, it's denier. Metric, it's we're, we're metric. So okay. that's that's the base material. And like this, it's flat and it's in its strongest state. But what we do to it, in a lot of cases, we've got to make bigger ropes and twist it. Yeah. We can do. So we have to add more to it to counteract that. So, twisting machines. Oh. Right, so on the, this, this is our first stage where we take the flat yarn and we twist multiple ends together. What this is doing is taking the number of separate ends, twisting them together at a set level and putting them onto what we call a, a package reel. By twisting the yarn, we can alter the surface property of the rope. Yeah. Now, what that can do is, if you get the harder the rope, the more, more resistant it is to catching, to rubbing, and then it gives you different sort of friction properties on the surface. So, so we can create different colour effects. It could all be one colour, it could be a mixture. And yeah, this is what we call the fryer. And this rope, it all rotates around, it, it creates a twist. There they are, they're separate lines going in and it gets twisted together to create. We can modify, we can change the number of twisted ends that we put on the spool depending on the size of the rope. Twisted yarn is in a different direction. Yeah. One's clockwise, one's anti clockwise. So it's it opposes itself on the finished rope, so you're not getting it all going in one direction. So we can, we can twist a large number of material, a large number of turns a week on there, probably yeah. six tons. The next thing we do is braiding. What this machine's doing, it's braiding 12 individual strands together. And what would this rope be used for? This is a, some sort of winch line. Not quite sure what it's pulling, but it'll have a it'll have a big thimble braided, spliced into the end, braided yeah. back, and uh, you, used for towing something very heavy. Setting the rope with heat and, yeah. and tension just to take the stretch out of it so when, when you first use it, it doesn't pull as much. And it, it, it makes the central part of it get a lot more integrity in the sense that when you splice the rope, it's not all, all fluffy, so it makes it easier to work with. Yeah. We, we've got a smaller version of the rope you just saw. This, this is actually the core that goes up the centre of a double braided rope. And it starts white. We can dye it lots of different colours, but it's dyed, stretched and reeled, ready to be overbraided. applications for rescue, hauling, abseiling. It's made of nylon uh, rather than polyester. So it actually stretches more deliberately. Yeah. So if you 
if you if you have a fall and you, you once the rope grips you and you, it doesn't it doesn't make any too much of a shock and it has has to pass particular standards uh, regarding shock load strength. If you tie a knot in it, it can weaken it up to 50%. So we like to splice or, or stick. That's very strong. Yeah. And if you feel that, that's very hard. Yeah. That, that's, that's a product, mainly that one is the material. That's a spun polyester. Yeah. It's lots of little pieces that get twisted together. Not quite like a spinning jenny, but it's a similar, similar principle. Whereas this is continuous filament yarn. That's more fluffy. This is a lot harder. Yeah. In this case, 200 meters onto a single reel. Yeah. And that's what would then go out to the customer. in a hot country mm. would you recommend a different kind of rope that's more uv resistant or well, has a different... to be honest the po polyester fits yeah. fits the bill it's general purpose very good for uv resistance yeah it, it's it melts at a very high temperature it's good up to about 260 degrees c so perfect some people will want the surface of the rope to be grippy some may want it to be more slippery mm. so we, we we can alter either the twist level of the outer cover to accommodate that, or we can change the material. Or finally, we can change the formation. We can move it from R, which is the smooth surface, to K, which is the rough surface. So it's quite, quite, quite simple, but we've got a number of different ingredients we can use. Amazing.